Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello, Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. I want to do something just a little bit different this time. We're usually I examine a comic book. Here, I want to talk a little bit about this, this book here, Comics of the American West, a book about comics history, and, this, and in this case, specifically, Western comics. Now this, uh, <laughs> and what you saw earlier, those, those were uh, uh, just a few of my uh, uh, Western-themed doodles. And uh, of course, this this book, Comics of the American West, large oversized trade paperback, eh, seven ninety five, which <laughs> tells you how long ago that was. Uh, this is, this is by Maurice Horn. <clears throat> so, and Maurice Horn, well, this book was uh, published in 1977, Comics of the American West. Maurice Horn was born in 1931. He is a French-American comics historian, and he is considered to be one of the first serious academics to study comics. And he has edited encyclopedias on comics, cartoons, and uh, written books on the history of comics and comic strips comic books and comic strips. And earlier in his career, in the 1950s, he co-authored under a pseudonym several French-language pulp-style mysteries and spy novels. And he moved to the U.S. in 1959, and uh, he, is, he belonged to a group um, champion, championing uh, the idea that, that comics should be considered an art form worthy of academic study, which it is now, now indeed considered to be. Now in this book, um, the, uh, by Maurice Horn, uh, as I said, is is the history book of of comics, Western comics. Trying to get in there, and it starts out with a short history of the Western strip. This is referring to Western comic strips, sagebrush. I like love sagebrush, and it goes goes way back, uh, and a lot of it owes owes uh, their um, a, a lot. The comic strips owe a lot to some of the uh, artists and illustrators who worked in the West. Um, during the West, at, at when it was real, and here these illustrations here are from uh, from fr uh, uh, drawn from actual uh, actual working cowboys in the um, um, Bald Bill Cody's. I said that wrong. Buffalo Bill Cody's. <laughs> I always want to say Wild Bill. Uh, Buffalo Bill Cody's uh, Wild West show, and that. And that uh, uh, those kind of things were an influence. Uh, the uh, uh, comic strips started. Western comic strips started early. You see some some funny stuff, in the, uh, but they but, it was actually a little bit late for, for the genre. Of course, um, Western novels go go back to the. Uh, 1800s, early 1800s, uh, in the, uh, the dime novels, what later be known as as the pulps, um, often like well, like Buffalo Bill himself, he was the subject of many dime novels, and there's a whole host of uh, of, of those things, and then when uh, films came along, uh, well, actually one of the first 
true uh, um, movies, story, uh, storytelling movies, it's the, the Great Train Robbery, was, of course, a Western. And there were, were West, uh, Western movies for several years before it actually made an appearance in in the West. I mean, uh, in the papers. Of course, the uh, of course started out with, with papers. Uh, um, mostly um, straightforward adventure stuff. Now, here... Some of these had some some really nice draftsmanship, and this is uh, of course um, a King of the Royal Mounted, and and things uh, things like that. Uh, Casey Ruggles, uh, Lone Ranger. Of course, Lone Ranger um, was a radio show. It started as a radio show and gained popularity, and moved into the uh, the comic strips. Uh, Red Rider. And Little Beaver. It's an adventure with a little bit of humor done in a, in a, a somewhat humorous, cartoonish style, but straightforward uh, adventure stories. And of course, the draftsmanship and storytelling uh, varied from very good to mediocre to poor, uh, like everything. That's some really nice stuff. Too bad to. Um, the reproduction here is is kind of muddy because there's some really nice nice artwork here. Here we have, for example, a strip um, Drago, which was of a, a South American setting for a, a, a type of Western adventure story, adventure strip done by Bern Hogarth, who I just not too long ago was talking about uh, with his uh, um, uh, dynamic figure drawing and his Tarzan strip, a variety of things, uh, and there's crossover from the movies, the books, and the movies, because uh, like there's um, Hopalong Cassidy, and and advertising. Of course, these are, are are ads for for the strips themselves, but many of the pop, more popular ones. Look at look at the be the beautiful dress, if you can see it, and that and that is uh, Casey Ruggles. Which was a, a western uh, done by um, Warren Tufts. And then he Warren Tufts afterwards. After that, he went on to do this in Lance. Unfortunately, it's a poor quality or original that they made, did this reproduction of. But you can still see the beautiful uh, draftsmanship. Which was and this was about uh, um, uh, U.S. Caval cavalry uh, during the Indian Wars. Of course, and there were strips of this nature. Uh, it, well, primarily Ameri in in the Americas, but uh, moved. They did it did some in Europe at that at that time as well. Strips, and then eventually, you finally got some some humor stuff. And then, of course, when comic books took off. Which is what we like to talk about around here, comic books. Um, this is an interesting book. I've had this book for several years, and uh, I lost just lost my place. Um, I've had this book for several years and, and read it then, and I, <laughs> of course, I've started rereading it now. And uh, of course, westerns was a big was big popular in the uh, uh, in the comic books and stayed stayed that way for decades to varying degrees uh, especially in the 50s and and there was a lot of crossover some of the some of the comic books especially of the 40s and 50s western comic books of the 40s and 50s were based on and sometimes reprints of uh, western comic strips and then they had comic books of Western movies and movie stars, such as Tom Mix, Tom Mix Comics. That was a, looks like a poor quality original. Roy, of course, Roy Rogers. And I mentioned uh, um, Hopalong Cassidy. Here, here's a little sample of now Dan Spiegel, who I spoke of not too long ago. He was doing Hopalong Cassidy. Look at that, and it, and. 
in just a few lines, he managed to, to really capture a resemblance of William Boyd, who played Hopalong Cassidy here. And and he also did some of the uh, Roy Rogers. There's a real good page of his from doing Roy Rogers. Of course, a whole, a whole bunch of people uh, uh, was involved in, in producing these. Here we have uh, Lone Ranger again, because uh, Lone Ranger became popular in the, in the comic books and comic strips, especially in the 50s when it was very popular on television. And of course, Kid Colt, Marvel Comics, Two Gun Kid, Wild Bill Pecos. And this is some, some somewhat stylized, but very nicely done. And like they did in some of the, the, uh, the, the Western movies, is they put it in a modern setting, or at least 30s or 40s, but they're still basically Western stories. Horseback Guns, usually in the countryside, but still had uh, uh, a modern setting. They had some really nice, lovely the line work in this. It's um, uh, just the line work itself it looks, to my eye, what I would, would call uh, feminine. It's not to say that it, the artist was a woman or feminine. It's just saying that the the loveliness of the line work makes me think femininity, even though there's nothing feminine particularly about it. Here's some more beautiful stuff. Now, uh, the Durango Kid, which was a uh, um, a series of low budget juvenile uh, Western movies in the late '40s and early '50s, and they were in the comics. I'd, I'd mentioned this stuff in, in uh, one of my previous Western episodes, and we'll undoubtedly cover uh, Dur Durango Kid sometime. And but there are others. Now, Al, here is someone that you might might really be familiar with and maybe even interested in is Frank Frazetta. Yes, the great illustrator Frank Frank Frazetta. He did he's of course he's best known for his uh, um, book covers and posters, uh, especially of uh, Tarzan book covers and Conan the Barbarian book covers. And of course he did he did comic books in the fifties. And some of those were Westerns. As you can see his, his draftsmanship is perfect for this very dr dramatic and dynamic and anatomically wonderful and just a whole whole, whole bunch Marvel Comics Ringo Kid oh, I will cover this is one we'll, we'll tackle sometime in the future magnificent draftsmanship of Doug Wildey doing the uh, Outlaw Kid this is all through the uh, 60s in the 70s, it started losing popularity We just not too long ago. This is the Cheyenne Kid talked about not too long ago. Matt Slade. Larry Lieber doing the uh, two good, um, Rawhide Kid. There's all kinds. All kinds. There, let's see. There's some Marvel. You name it. And they... Um, but here we go. How the West is, and Western is interpreted in other other comics, uh, how they they dealt with Western themes or um, had Western adventures in what were otherwise non-Western strips, such as we have here. And these are straightforward humor strips, humor adventure strips, and they were had. These happened to have a West a Western. Uh, Western story. And some of them even, even, uh, you know, stuff like, uh, little, uh, little orphan Annie and the, and the like. Uh, here's, um, um, Roy, Roy Crane's, uh, Casey, Captain Case, Captain Easy. And which was an adventure strip and just had a Western setting. Some others, Mandrake the Magician, um, Brick Bradford, uh, science fiction. Even Buck Rogers had some Western stuff. Buck Rogers. And here we have a little color section. This is the Gun That Won the West. And this was a comic book put out by the uh, by Winchester. And some other, others. Here we get a nice color section. Again, Roy Rogers. Oh, it's a 
beautiful draftsmanship here on this one. Little Joe. Bronk Peeler. Um, Red Wolf from Marvel Comics. And here we have another with the Lone Ranger. And the color has faded. This has done something from something that in which the color had faded from it. But I do want to show, show one that most people think of the Lone Ranger all dressed in blue, that kind of powder blue that he he's known for. But that was just from the TV show. Um, and they picked it up and carried it through the comics after that. But here we, sh we see he's blue pants and red shirt. And that is the way the first, the original way he was, de he was detected depicted visually of course he started in radio when in the in the comic strip and advertising they gave him a red shirt and it was only on the tv show that they moved it to a blue shirt cowboy love he even had the uh, stuff in the romances popeye even had adventure uh, uh western adventures and then then the western was very popular uh, around the world american westerns and in europe here we have, uh, which I, I fellow who I co uh, covered before, Lucky Luke. Because in, uh, like, France, Belgium, uh, Spain, and Italy, American Western stories were very popular. That's where we got the, uh, um, the spaghetti westerns of the 60s and 70s. And, and very, some beautiful, they had, the, the, the uh, Europeans had some really, really beautiful Beautiful uh, Western artwork. And I can't... Here you see another... More in the humor vein. Some really lovely artwork. Line work here. Uh, Jane Calamity. So it's supposed to be Calamity Jane. This is a Spanish... Uh, uh, Spanish comic. But... And it was probably from the late 40s or early 50s. But unfortunately, we see here some very bad racial stereotypes in it. In, even amongst this, the beautiful realistic draftsmanship it relied on poor racial stereotyping in, con in cartoons which is very unfortunate here's one that uh, is German but it's based on uh, a series of German western novels uh, by see here Helmut Nickel and had uh, Winnetou, and uh, Winnetou, and they even had several movies, uh, American movies. Uh, um, well, they were German-made made movies, largely for an American audience. Uh, uh, Old Iron Hand, and um, Old Sure Hand were the uh, main white characters, but they they were different characters, but they had they shared a common Indian sidekick friend in the name of Winnetou. And that was interesting. They even had, did adapted some stuff here. And here is Gun Law, which is a strip based on gun smoke in Europe. And it had nudity. It was more risque than you would ever would have seen in American comic or on American television. Oh, there's some beautiful stuff here. That's uh, El Coyote, inspired by uh, Jose Mallory. I can't even pronounce it. Uh, uh, I, it's some uh, Western novel, Spanish Western novels. I can't even pronounce it. Oh, this is some beautiful stuff. Well, I'm not going to show everything. But this is just a nice overview even shows uh, talks a little bit about the influence of of the western comics and western genre in general and in, uh, in Jap uh, in Japan uh, the uh, the whole samurai movie craze of the 50s was their answer to um, to the um, um, american westerns here we have a, a popular american comic strip rick o'shea to ricochet uh, ricochet and hip shot which was a, a, a a lovely adventure, western adventure uh, strip. And then sometime in, I believe it's in the 70s, they updated it to the 20th century. Still still basically the same format, except they put it in the 20th century, which I didn't like. And I wanted to uh, mention, too, that everybody got in fault. Uh, Zane Gray, a... Uh, um, a 
very popular Western novelist, did uh, comic strips. In fact, um, um, I suddenly forgot his name, and I just saw it a, a couple minutes ago. The uh, um, the Mountie, this, this movie, uh, the strip about about the Mountie. He created that. And he, wrote, and he wrote some other Western, Western comic strips and had a series of comic books based on his work. And if you're at all interested, of course, this is something that's not likely to, to, to easy to get a hold of. And the, even so, if it's in good shape, it may be, uh, may not be of, uh, um, within one's price range. But I, I like this because I not only, as I've mentioned before, I collect comics, but I collect them for readability. I want to read comics. I like the, I love the medium of comics. That's why you've seen my, uh, um, my stuff. Reading material is very eclectic from the, uh, from the humor, uh, teen humor, romance, uh, superheroes, western, science fiction, uh, to the religions religious comics and uh, underground stuff you, uh, you name it and I'm and I'm very interested in the uh, history of the comics medium and it's uh, it, it's it is a major art form for the tw from the 20th century having its roots and its roots do go back into antiquity all the way back to uh, oh, in to ancient Egypt and even into prehistory. So that is about all that. I just love the book. I love the Western media. This is a nice wrap wraparound cover. But um, I just wanted, wanted to share that with you. And please like, share, subscribe. Leave comments. Friendly comments, please. Uh, <laughs> and... Remember, comics are art and history.